Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well, this week marked the end of the temporary wage subsidy scheme with its replacement, the Employment Wage Support Scheme, coming into effect. If your year-on-year turnover has dropped by 30% per month, then you could be entitled to €203 Euros per employee per week. So I would urge you to register your business with the revenue for the EWSS without delay. Also this week, Microfinance Ireland launched its new €15 million Euro COVID fund and I'm joined by the organisation's CEO, Garrett Stokes, to discuss this in more detail. Garrett, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Carl. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Garrett, the Microfinance Ireland COVID-19 business loan was launched in March last with a maximum loan amount of €50,000. 1,015 businesses submitted applications and 687 of these were approved. Why were 32% of the applications rejected? Well, there was probably approximately 15% of them who actually were ineligible. You go, and if I explain that one to you, Carl, some of them uh, would have uh, not been uh, impacted by COVID, so they were applying for something they couldn't apply for, and other ones just didn't make it through our assessment process. On the 7th of July last, just one week after many businesses had reopened their doors, Microfinance Ireland suspended accepting applications for your COVID-19 business loan. I believe this came as a surprise to many of the business mentors and SMEs across the country. The timing of that eight-week suspension could not have been worse for many cash-strapped businesses. Unfortunately, we were caught in a, a, the perfect storm. Uh, we, we ran out of cash ourselves. Uh, the government, the new government that was being formed, and uh, bec- the only way we can get money is under a, a government act, uh, which couldn't be empowered uh, by the government uh, because there wasn't one formed at the time. So. Uh, we literally had to close our doors to new applicants. But what we didn't close our doors to what we had in the uh, applications we'd received, and we continued to write those loans over the coming weeks. Well, the good news is that the government has made a further €15 million Euros available to Microfinance Ireland, and you've reopened your doors for applications last Monday. So what are the main features of this revised loan? Well, it's, it, it, there's two major things that are different to uh, the previous one. Well, I'll bring you through those in a minute. But the maximum loan size, which is one of them, is 25,000 rather than 50,000. The term of the loan hasn't changed. That's three years. Uh, two of the big features are there, it's a zero repayment and zero interest loan for f- the first six months. And then your repayments would naturally start in month seven. And the government have uh, approved a rebate which will come into play uh, in month 13 after you've made your first six repayments during month 7 to 12. And that'll be a full refund of all interest in that six-month period. So there's definitely been some positives, but also negatives in relation to this revised loan offering. The big blow to businesses really is in relation to that massive reduction of 50% from €50,000 to €25,000 for the maximum loan amount. What's the rationale for this reduction, Garrett? The loan size is actually set by government, and and uh, they determined that this was appropriate for this uh, this version or this phase of the loan because, as part of July stimulus, they announced a number of other uh, strong supports for small businesses, and uh, including the uh, revamped future growth loan scheme and a bank credit guarantee scheme, and. They are, they are much larger schemes and they, they would be seen as the first, first protocol for any business. Our mandate is to support businesses that can't get bank finance. So now that those supports are in place uh, the, and to utilise our money as widely as we can, we'll be spreading that £15 million across a larger range of businesses rather than uh, ac- across a smaller number who could all be applying for 50000 but of course, if we go back before COVID, the Microfinance Ireland loan offering was always a maximum of €25,000. As soon That's as correct. COVID came along, the government felt that there was a need to increase that loan amount to €50,000. I'm wondering, what has changed since then? It was a, uh, the, a mindset of actually spreading the available funds available for small businesses across as many agencies and entities as possible. Uh, and it was felt that uh, because... The, the two schemes I mentioned actually go down uh, to 10,000 or 25,000 in each case. Uh, 
that uh, it would made more sense for us to go back to our 25,000 limit. But if you look at the applications that are going in for SBCI funding, the average application is somewhere around €200,000. So it's a much bigger sum and it feeds back to it being a far more complex application process. I'd accept that. Uh, what is very interesting about phase one is that our average loan size was 27,000. We found the businesses actually were being very... Uh, cautious, which was good to see. Uh, people weren't looking for the maximum by, I mean, obviously we did some 50,000s, but it was very well spread between 5,000 up to 50,000 with the average, as I said, at 27,000. So uh, I, I would assume uh, a lot of businesses now will come in looking for the upper amount around 25,000. My concern really is for the larger businesses between, let's say, five and nine staff, 25,000 isn't going to go an awful long way with them. People could be consider, uh, and this might be helpful for your audiences. Banks will may say if a business is looking for fifty thousand, the bank might give them twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and we could do the remainder. We also have within our scheme, while it's a maximum loan of twenty-five thousand, if you're an existing business, we can go twenty-five thousand again with you, if you, as long as your overall exposure to us is no more than fifty. If a business works through their local enterprise office and submits their application to MFI, the interest rate is 4.5%. But if they go directly to Microfinance Ireland, it's 5.5%. Why is this the case? This is to encourage people to use their local enterprise office. We find uh, with the a large majority of our customers over the years that they need other supports. And sometimes these other supports are even as valuable or if not more valuable than the, the loan money itself. And what I mean by that is the training, the, uh, the other grant schemes they might be able to uh, avail of, uh, mentoring services. All those things are part of a overall offering which we try to feed into. And we, we offer the 1% discount to help encourage people to go where they'll get the best round of uh, package of uh, supports. And has that worked in the past in phase one? For instance, what percentage of applications made their way through the local enterprise office network? About 33% under COVID-1 were for through the local enterprise office. Now, something else that I heard along the way as well in relation to phase one was that if, for instance, a business submitted an application through the local enterprise office to Microfinance Ireland, they were also then having to make their way from the local enterprise office to Enterprise Ireland's Centre of Excellence. Is that correct? And if so, why was that the case? What the local enterprise offices did for us, or our, our Centre of Excellence did for us, was they... Uh, took all the applications from the local enterprise office because there was a situation many people weren't were many of the people in the local enterprise office were working from home they were having difficulty in packaging together the application uh, and what the center of excellence did was they t- followed up on making sure that all the documentation that was needed was collected and put together uh, so it, 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 off- it kind of offered operated as a as a not a postal service, but a sorting house for the application so that when we got the application, it was complete and we could handle it quickly for the customers. And is that process going to be followed in phase two as well? Not initially. Uh, the local enterprise offices are, are in a better position uh, with people in the offices having a, a availability of scanning scanners, printers, etc. So well, we, will, we will watch that one daily. Uh, because who knows what's going to happen, unfortunately, with this pandemic. Now, as you say, the positives with this phase of the loan scheme are there are no repayments for the first six months. There's a lower interest rate being charged. And, of course, there's also a rebate on the interest being paid. Talk to us specifically about that rebate, please, Garrett. Yeah, the way that's going to work, Carl, is uh, after month six, the, the business will normally go on to its repayment schedule. And subject to them making their first six repayments, uh, what will happen without them having to do anything in month 13 uh, the, uh, the amount of interest that they have paid will actually be credited straight back into their bank account And what does the application process entail? We ask the person it's an application form we actually have a very simple business plan and it's, well, the business plan is actually no more difficult than it's four questions what has happened to your business uh, through because of COVID-19 and what are your plans to come out of it so it's a very simple uh, 
tell us what's happened to you, to your business, so that we can actually assess the, the, neg- the negative downturn on the business and how they plan to get through it. So there's the application form and this, which for, it's all that the business plan is part of the application form, in fairness. Uh, and then they, we want a, a the bank statements, because we don't have any line of sight, we're not a bank, we don't have any line of sight of, of the business's bank statements. Uh, we get a CCO report and uh, and we look for management accounts. And Garrett, from the applications, over 1,000 of them that have come through your hands to date, what are businesses looking to use this money for? It came in two phases, Carl. Uh, initially, uh, it was a huge amount of people trying to just actually uh, close up the business in a safe way, so pay off some suppliers that they wanted to uh, have available to them when they reopened, pay the rent if they were renting, pay some pay some salaries was and so it was very much working capital and then it rolled into a phase two where people were beginning to reopen and they needed to restock so we were funding restocking and there's also been a bit of people needing to protect their businesses and their their employees and their customers so we you know some element of would have been on capex for whether it's uh, screening in the office or signage and that kind of thing but it has been predominantly working capital. Now, one of the requirements is that all loan applicants to MFI must be able to demonstrate that they are having difficulty obtaining bank finance. What is required to prove this, Garrett? It's, it's, it's simply a, de- a self-declaration on the application form. We don't look for a, a, a decline letter from the bank or anything like that. Uh, and we will actually discuss it with the customer to make sure they have actually been to the bank because we are there to to actually fund people who can't get bank finance. We're not there as a a quick loan for people who can. So we're trying to identify the most vulnerable businesses and the people who need us most. And to meet the eligibility criteria, the business must have been negatively impacted by COVID-19 by a minimum of 15% of turnover or profit. But what is the reference period for this? It's uh, the trading period before, assuming they were in business for the previous year, but it could be six months, we will look at the turnover through their business pre-COVID, so pre-March, and uh, we and it's, it's a, it's obviously it's a fairly simple calculation. And unfortunately for many people, it's too simple a calculation because they just have to shut their doors. Of course, and as part also of the application process, you require businesses to submit 12 months cash flow projections. Now we're facing into a very uncertain period economically, and some would argue that you would need a crystal ball to predict the next 12 months in business. And I wouldn't disagree with you. And what we do in our predecessor meets uh, with the, our, our with the potential customers, the, the applicants, uh, what they will do is work through that with them. And it, it's really a measure of the person being able to say, I think this is what's going to happen to my business. And what they're looking for is a level of sensibility in what they're saying. Uh, we, we, quite, we're, we quite expect someone to be showing us negative or zero turnover at the moment, a small build-up. But it's a means of trying to calculate based on the past business that was there and the, the assessment that the person is making of the, of the business going forward. You know, is it sustainable and is there a, a business model there? But we work, nobody expects the cash flow to be accurate, and nobody's going to know if it's accurate. Uh, I mean, things at the moment are just so difficult for businesses. So we work. We do want the cash flow to understand the the operations of the business, but we obviously understand that they're they're not going to be accurate. And finally, Garrett, how can businesses apply for your Microfinance Ireland COVID nineteen business loan? Two ways. Go and visit your local enterprise office uh, and they'll help you with the application or come online at www.microfinanceireland.ie. The templates, the application process is all outlined there so people can download the forms and they can see what they need to send in. Or if people want to ring us, they can phone us here at the office uh, and uh, we will talk them through the process. We try to make it as simple for people as possible. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Garrett Stokes, the CEO of Microfinance Ireland. And I would like to remind eligible businesses to avail of this valuable financial support. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.